I, I want to talk today really as a participant in a lot of different ways. The first, and the reason I'm here, is that I introduced myself as an economist who never got a data set he didn't like. I've been doing health economics for about 30 years. And I've been associated in some important ways with big data collections. The AHRQ, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Qualities, Healthcare Cost and Utilization Project. I've been doing that for 20 plus years. They've been doing it for 30 plus years. Um, and uh, I've been associated with uh, IBM's uh, Market Scan database um, for 20 plus years. And I'll tell you a little bit about both of those and some of the aspects of both of those. I'm a patient. Um, about three years ago, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Um, I was dealing with uh, Beth Israel Deaconess, which, by the way, has a lovely Oath and Notes program. Um, and, you know, you can see your record. Uh, you can see what the doctor writes down after the day after the visit. It's, it's wonderful. Um, but uh, for a variety of reasons, I ended up at Dana-Farber. And now, I, I, you know, prostate cancer comes in many forms. I don't have the watchful waiting time. I have the let's be aggressive and try and treat it, and I'm in a, um, an, a randomized controlled trial now, trying to deal with this. And I'll talk a little bit about randomized controlled trials and broad data. That'll be part of the intellectual piece that you get today. And I'm a father of a, 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 a lovely adult woman um, who, uh, at age 12, was uh, diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And uh, I, I'll tell some stories about that to try and put things in a broader perspective. Um, so that, that's, that's where I'm coming from. And uh, at the bottom of the slide, in small print, the opinions are my own and do not reflect the official position of any organization. Uh, so that's, that's a disclaimer you've heard from many people, I'm sure. Um, the Healthcare Cost Immunization Project is uh, our largest collection of longitudinal hospital data in the U.S. It's been going on for a long time. It's basically administrative data, inpatient, outpatient, emergency room, ambulatory surgery center um, data uh, collected, and uh, the samples are drawn from the big pool of data uh, that are widely used. It's, it's very cool. Um, you can go to hcup.gov and get all the detail you want. Uh, the IBM market scan databases started, you know, when it was MedStat, Thomson Reuters, True, but now IBM. Uh, it's the pool of experience. It's claims data. Um, there's some, there's some additional uh, health risk assessment, um, health and productivity management stuff. Patients are de-identified. Providers are encrypted. It's been used for about 1,400 peer-reviewed journal articles. I'm going to talk a little bit about the use of data not in the ways that we've been talking about this morning. It's not all about the bedside. Um, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a broader perspective in here. And I'm gonna talk as, a, uh, as an economist. And I don't know, uh, without being, you won't be asked if you really know what this stands for. But how many people in the room know what this stands for? Please raise your hand. There are a few. All right, it's, it's tanstaffle is the way it's uh, pronounced, and it means there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> and if, if you want to get big data, somebody's going to have to pay the bill. It doesn't come for free. And um, with, with HCUP, the federal government pays the the big bill for the final piece. But you know where the, the data, where HCUP started was, oh, there's this billing data, and hospitals and payers collaborated on what was a uniform bill. This is back in the 70s. So uniform bill data. And then the hospital administrators thought, oh, if I get all of my uniform bill data together, I could actually maybe get an idea of what the physicians who are practicing in my hospital are doing. 
So now we're away from the bedside, we're at the management level in the hospital, and we're taking advantage of readily available, cheap data. Um, <coughs> it's, it's really the, the, the going from the hospital level, hospitals are interested in comparing how they're doing to other hospitals. State hospital associations started to put together pools of that uniform bill data. There were, uh, there's an opportunity then to compare yourself to others like you. The federal government steps in and says, let's set up a partnership. HCUP really is a private public partnership with federal and state participation um, that, uh, that builds a nationwide view uh, that can inform policy decisions. Market scans roughly the same thing, except it's with payers, starting with self-insuring employers, trying to understand what the what their medical benefits were going to. Claims data were cheap, pool them together. Um, the, the initiators of the market scan database said, you know, let us let us pool the data and we'll give you back comparative information and help you uh, and help you negotiate. Um, prostate cancer. What's my story there? So it, it's really um, uh, going from diagnosis to treatment to treatment to treatment. Uh, you have interesting experiences. I I wanted to get a second opinion at Dana Farber. Those of you who know Boston know that Beth Israel Deaconess is right across the street from Dana Farber. You know how, what you have to do today to move your imaging data from Beth Israel to Dana Farber? You have to fight Boston traffic into Beth Israel. You have to wait outside while they burn a CD. Um, you wait for the CD, you get it, you walk across the street in the snow, you give it to uh, uh, the, the people at Dana Farber who are used to getting data that way. What planet are we on? <laughs> These institutions have really good access to the internet. <laughs> but, but somehow we're concerned that, um, and I, I know that there'll be privacy discussions later today, but I'll tell you, I would have, they could have posted my images on the public <laughs> web for years. It could never go away if it, it would save me the trip into uh, carrying that CD across. Uh, my type 1 diabetes story, it, in a way, the, is the same kind of thing. So, uh, when Jessica was diagnosed, uh, we were living in the south side of Chicago, around the University of Chicago, and, and uh, we had friends who were in the medical profession. They said, ah, you know, five to ten years, they'll have a glucose monitor feedback to a pump to get insulin into the system. It'll all, you know, you'll, it'll be fine. It's 30 plus years later. Um, there are continuous glucose monitors. There are uh, uh, pumps. And actually, Jessica has both of them. There is a closed loop system. Um, uh, well, Jessica also has a service dog who's been trained to uh, sniff out when she goes low or high because she lives alone. And, and, you know, there's, uh, and, and she relies on Hetty much more than she relies on the, uh, uh, the closed loop system. Uh, but initially, she was concerned about the, um, the, I don't know if it was the privacy, it was the security risk about having those instruments connected to her body um, communicating over the web. And if some of you are Homeland fans, you might remember that our president of the United States was killed by a hacked pacemaker in one Homeland episode a few years ago. I don't know if Jessica was thinking about that, but at some point, it, uh, as she had this closed loop system, uh, she's decided, you know, I just as soon send this information to my boyfriend so that he can map monitor it on, on his iPhone. And it's like, okay. Um, I, uh, we can we can deal with things. So so those are a couple of emotional um, emotional issues for me. Um, 
I want to talk now about, uh, intellectually about data and its fit for purpose. And uh, we, heard, we heard some discussions earlier today about data gaps. And we were talking at the table, I think that the, the big data gap that I see um, is the, uh, the, how do you feel today? Capturing that how do you feel today in some way that I can build into these systems yeah, is a big open question. But everybody focuses on randomized controlled trials, and they're often described as the gold standard in healthcare. Um, and um, in 1932, Franklin Roosevelt took the United States off the gold standard for um, uh, currency, and most economists thought that that was a really good idea. Uh, I think it would be a really good idea if we stopped talking about randomized controlled trials as a gold standard. They answer a very narrow question. RCTs are, this is Pan-Stackler stuff. RCTs are very expensive. The people who are funding them want to get a very clear answer, so they narrow the population that's in the trial. So there are 850 men who are in the, the phase three trial that I'm in, and we all meet some very special criteria. Um, there, uh, I mentioned the institution-wide or practice-wide uh, use of data as we get away from the bedside and try and look at individual providers. Uh, and you're answering a question of how are my employees doing? And even there, it's a very small sample. Um, the system-wide issues, managing the system, this is the, this is the age cut story, uh, built wide. And when you get to nationwide and statewide issues, you're thinking about setting policy and, and how we get at that. And as we do, as we build databases for those management and policy relevant purposes, um, there is the risk associated with building databases like that, and there are some benefits around that. And this is, these are the way that economists think about risk, probability of harm, and the consequences of inappropriate use. So when I thought about driving into Boston and carrying that CD around, I'm thinking about it in these terms, I'd rather have uh, folks uh, connected um, between those institutions and, and playing out that. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on this table, uh, but I think it'll be available to you later. Um, but there, uh, with uh, RCTs, uh, the probability of harm actually depends on who you are. You know, some of us in the RCT are worried a little bit about side effects. Um, and there's the probability of gain. Uh, and that depends on how the, how the subject uh, is, is structured. Um, and let's think about our challenges for a minute. Um, get the maximum net benefit from a portfolio of data assets. Um, whatever we do, let's minimize the risk for any level of use. Don't do anything really stupid. Choose the level of use that maximizes the net benefit <coughs> given uh, that you've minimized risk at any level. And um, when you're creating a data asset, there's a cost involved. Last comments are about centralized, that's HCUP and market scan versus federated databases. Um, Sentinel, which is collected by the Food and Drug Administration, that's part of the pharmacovigilance issue. Um, and the CORNET, uh, the Patient Centered Outcomes Research Network, uh, are federated databases. The data stays in the original place, typically an integrated delivery network. Um, is it pooled in a, into a central uh, repository? And it's done. Um, uh, it's done because people don't want to give up their data. Uh, they're worried that if it's centralized, it might be misrepresented, misused, uh, abused in one way or another. Um, and and I, I, I think that those worries may be overblown, but there's a cost. 
to a federated data system. Um, and that's, while you expose less data for a single breach, you complicate and slow the research process. Um, and uh, that's, that's a key aspect of uh, trying to get answers that move us forward. It's not just the care of an individual patient, it's the management of ins individual institutions, the management of, uh, uh, of systems. Um, so I think, I, I wanna say thank you for the time that um, you've devoted here, and I'm happy to, uh, uh, to take a question or two if there's time. Research or policy research uh, that I've been talking about. Uh, I want to I, I want to touch on one aspect of this that your question calls to mind. People worry you're going to make money with my data, and and part of my reason for bringing up there ain't no such thing as a free lunch is that that making of money with the pool data is a way to pay for it and a way to create that value um, for uh, institutional change over time and policy change over time. Um, so I, I open the door for that discussion. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, at some point, Janice, you uh, called me, a, uh, captured me as a cheerful capitalist. I think, I think that's where um, the, um, you can do good and make money only because you're doing good, frankly. Uh, if you, but um, I, haven't seen, I haven't seen the abuse. The breaches that happen are happening in those, often enough in those gas stations in Texas, um, as well as uh, uh, electronic intruders. The breaches with the electronics tend to be with larger numbers of patients. So, if when we talk about electronic medical records, they're a billing tracking system far before they're a clinical notes system. Um, if the most available, easiest to get data all relates to that, and we build things from that, how do we have confidence that what we're building isn't just another layer of what a lot of people in this room see as the problem? So sort of, oh, you, you know, good news, we have more of what you don't like, and we've studied, <laughs> you know, we've studied it now. So, uh, does that make sense? It does make sense. Okay. Um, and, and I think, uh, Let's think about longitudinal patient records and how you can put them together and how you can capture your history. Um, people have a lot of concerns about claims data and the value that's in there. And the doctors are really the worst about that. But, and they're the source of some of the stuff that they trash the most. I think. It's always a puzzle to me. But, the, um, if you, if I want to build 
of my own longitudinal patient record. I'd like to have a starting point. It doesn't have to be perfect as a starting point. And I would start with the claims because all of my providers are submitting claims in a relatively standard format. And you know, CMS has a blue button uh, technology that's <coughs> supposed to get my claims available to me. I want my health plan to be able to do that. So I, I can start, an event happened on a particular day. Yeah. I'd love to get the information from open notes of what the doctor wrote down about that. And I'd add that in. Um, so when I say I was an economist who never met a data set he didn't like, I like all of these things, but none of them are perfect. They're all imperfect. And, but, but for people in this room, don't hate it. Recognize it for what it is. It's, it's uh, tracks in the sand of where you've been, and it's not written in stone. Um, when, make your own longitudinal record, but use those things as tools. Would be, that would be, uh, uh, that, that is my approach. Uh, I, I think I'm supposed to stop. <laughs> but, but if, Maybe over here. 